It's exciting times for the happy putter. Every week, we're getting more and more tour players calling us and asking us to build them their own happy putter, including several former major championship winners. The reason is because we have a technology that they can't get with any other putter. And what I want to do is take you through the tour fitting analysis and process that we take them through so that you can fit yourself just like a tour player. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the lie angle is set properly and that the powder is laying flat on the ground. So what I'm going to do is get behind Jeff, ask him to address his normal putting stance, and um, I can see that the putter is perfectly laying flat on the ground, so he's good. But if Jeff was closer to the ball and his hands were up more, you're going to see the toe of the putter go down, the heel of the putter goes up. We need to change this to an upright lie angle. If, on the other hand, Jeff took a step back, lowered his hands, you're going to see the toe go up, you're going to see the heel go down, and you're going to need a flat lie angle. But for Jeff, when he lines up properly, it's perfect. It's on the ground flat. He's good to go. Nice. So once we have the lie angle fixed, we need to make sure we get the loft on the putter right. So what you want to do is I want to have the player set up as he would. I'm going to look at his hands, and I can see that he has a pretty typical setup, and so there's no really reason to change this loft. Some players like to use a forward press where they put their hands forward slightly. In that case, you would go to the high loft shim. When would you lose, use the low shim? Probably if you're playing really fast greens or greens that you know are going to roll true, um, maybe 12 or more on the stint meter, that's when I would think you would go to the low shim. Um, but if you have a typical setup like this, the standard shim should be good. So one of the coolest things about the Happy Putter is that it offers adjustable alignment. This is a huge technology breakthrough for putters, maybe one of the biggest in decades. And so what we are allowing you to do is figure out what are your visual preferences. We studied optics a lot, and we know that every golfer sees different things better. And so some golfers are going to like a thin line, and they're going to project that better. Others are going to like multiple lines, and they're going to see this better, while others are going to like a thick line and maybe that black and white contrast. The question is, what do you like best? Here's a cool story for you. Working with tour players, I had players that lined up a good cup to a cup left of target with one guide, and then we just kept trying the guides out to where we were able to see what they were lining up perfectly every time. This technology can have the same impact on you. So what we want to do is not guess what do you see the best, but actually put it in through trial and see what you line up. So as we said, we set up our course. We have a six foot straight putt, a 12 foot uh, straight putt, and an 18 foot straight putt. We're gonna start at the six. I'm gonna get behind him. And I'm gonna ask him to line up directly to the center of that hole and I want him to tell me when he's there. Okay. Great, go ahead and hit the putt. Perfect. So I'm gonna give you a little tip. What happens if uh, you don't have a buddy there with you to tell you if you're lined up properly or what happens if your buddy can't see? Well, what you can do is, the first thing you can do is, Jeff, line up to it again and uh, tell me when you think you're lined up center of the hole. Okay. Perfect. So if you do have your buddy and he can't see, just have him put a T straight and flush across the face, and then Jeff can come back and look and see that he's lined up perfectly where he was, right? Yeah. Now let's see that if you, had a, you didn't have a buddy and you just wanted to fit yourself. Well, it may be a little awkward, but not too bad. Jeff, set up to it again. Get that ball, uh, get that putter aimed. Center, and when you think you're there, just you put the tee down, flush against the face. And then you can come back and see how you're lined. So this is how you're gonna get your data. And the great thing is, you don't have to figure it out in a few minutes in a pro shop. You can actually take your happy putter, go to a golf course, and not guess what you see the best, but know what you see the best. All you're going to do is you're going to set up your putting course, your 6 foot, your 12 foot, your 18 foot straight putt. You're going to go ahead and you're going to take 5 putts from each station with each of the guides and you're going to know by tracking how many putts am I making from each station. At the end of your test, just go back and see guide number 2 or whatever it might be was the one that you see the best and you will know what your visual preferences are. So I want to share with you a theory called the lazy eye syndrome. And it's really based on a brain development theory where um, you want to keep exposing your brain to new things. That's why they tell you, you know, it's good to learn new languages or learn a musical instrument or even something as simple as driving different ways to work so your brain doesn't shut down and just kind of get in a routine. 
the same thing applies to putters and line them up. You know, I've done so many demo days and invariably you'll see putters, players put putters down and when they see a new thing, they make more putts. I think it's because their eyes are seeing something new, their brain is functioning more and they are focusing more clearly than they were before. The great thing with a happy putter is you can combat lazy eye syndrome because when you look at your putter and you start to see you're going back to your old tendencies of lining up left or right of target, just switch out your guide and you're going to reset your brain just like a computer. You're going to focus and you're going to be able to make more putts. And then when time goes by, slip in your first guide and your lazy eye syndrome is going to be reset again. All right, so we got the lie figured out, we got the law figured out, and then we went through the alignment process. We know what Jeff sees the best, but now he may be putting, we're gonna get him on a six foot putt. What happens if he notices on a straight putt, he's pulling the putts to the left? Well, what that means is his hands are closing through the impact zone too quickly so his putter face isn't square. So if it's coming through too quickly, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get your hands up further so they have less time to turn. Hopefully that makes sense. And so what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna increase your offset. On the other hand, what happens if Jeff is pushing his putts to the right? So in that case, what's happening is Jeff's hands are coming through open. And so what he needs is he needs more time to be able to get that putter square. So what we're gonna do is we're going to decrease the offset, giving his hands more time to get through and get that putter squared impact. Now, what happens if he just steps up there and nails it right in the center? Well, then we know the putter is set up perfectly for him. Now, here's the thing. Timing changes, offset changes, that's the beauty of the happy putter. You may have rounds where you're pulling or pushing, change your offset, it'll fix it. Let's talk about weight. There's so many theories on weight, you know, heavy putters versus light putters. I really think it's a personal decision and what feels best in your hands. And so I'm gonna show you one uh, drill in particular that is a, a lag putting drill uh, that will allow you to calibrate and figure out which weight should be in your putter. Okay, so the drill we're going to show you is, uh, is a way to calibrate your weight to see what's best for you. We want you to find a uphill 40 foot putt, 40 to 45 feet, and then downhill, same distance. Um, start out with your putter with no weight in it and just hit it back and forth uh, five or six times to try to see um, how you're performing there. After you do that, go ahead and uh, put in the lighter weight. Do the same thing, hit it up the hill and then down the hill. After you've done that a few times, go ahead and put in the heaviest weight. Repeat the drill again, up the hill, down the hill. And then just kind of track to see which ones you're hitting the closest and that'll tell you which weight should go in your putter.